Hello, it's Rose Parker back on my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, welcome. I'm from the Instagram and podcast Psychosis Sensitivity. Feel free to join me there. If you do know me, welcome back. It's good to see you. Today, I'd like to take a look into hearing voices. Now, hearing voices is the most stereotypic symptom of schizophrenia and psychosis. It's also the most common. Uh, auditory hallucinations are the most common hallucination in psychosis, and most people with schizophrenia do hallucinate. Now, many people without psychosis, and even those that do, have many misconceptions about what auditory hallucinations consist of and how we actually experience them. And today, I'd like to go over some quick facts about auditory hallucinations, voices specifically, and what they're actually like to experience. So, our first fact is that hearing voices that tell you to do things are called command voices. Now, command voices are probably the most stereotypical symptom of schizophrenia, but they're also one of the most misunderstood. Command voices do not necessarily force you to do any action. People, even clinicians, assume that when we hear a voice, we feel that we must obey that voice, but that's simply not true. That's not supported by the body of literature. I will link sources down below, and it's not supported by most people with psychosis experience. I personally, I heard my first command voice when I was three or on the border of four years old, and while I did what it said then, I learned to not do what it say when I was five. That's when I started ignoring my command voices, and I've been doing it ever since. And by the way, if you hear any background noise, I have pet birds. Um, so, command voices are not these commands from God that we must obey. They are simply another sensory experience, and yes, they can be distressing, but even if someone was yelling at you to do something dangerous that you didn't want to, while it might be distress distressing, it doesn't mean you would do it. You would probably try and fight back or sabotage it in some way, and that's what psychotic people do. Um, just what exactly we do varies by level of insight. Fact number two, voices can be musical. What a lot of people don't realize, and they seem surprised for some reason, is that we can have musical voices. We can hear people singing. It's off, It's very common to hear Gregorian chants, actually. Um, that one surprises people, but um, sometimes it can be an actual voice that is singing, or instead of a voice, we will hear instrumental music. Um, I've noticed in my work with the psychotic community that a lot of musical hallucinations contain older styles of music rather than modern styles, but that, that's just an observation. Yeah, the, these musical hallucinations, they can be pleasant and they can be unpleasant. I remember in 2018, during one of my last manic episodes, I had a bout of music hallucinations that lasted for a month straight. There were, it was Gregorian chant, and I had these Gregorian chants from the moment I woke up to the moment I fell asleep. And I developed some pretty severe delusional behavior because of these hallucinations. And I almost walked out into traffic at one point because of them. So, so for some, sometimes these music can be not so bad. Like, sometimes I get it just when I'm over-focusing or over or now, and it can be a signal to me that I am overstressed or overtired and I need to go to bed, and it's not an unpleasant to experience to have, but other times, as in this mania story, it can be quite frightening. Number three, voices can be indistinct. People often assume that hallucinatory voices are loud and clear. You can hear exactly what they're saying all the time, and that's not true. Oftentimes, hallucinatory voices are mumbled. They're unclear. Um, it'll sound like you're hearing voices in a crowded room rather than you're hearing one person talking to you. 
And I think a lot of this, it depends on whether they're internal or external voices. It does for me. Um, internal or external voices, what I'm referring to is the fact that voices can sound like they're in your head, like another stream of consciousness, or they can sound external, like another person in the room. And for me, external voices are rarely distinct. They're usually muddled. They sound like they're far away or multiple people talking at once. And internal voices are usually much more clear. Four, this is, this is not particularly common, but it does happen. There are people who will see a visual hallucination of a physical representation of the voice. This is often a figure, it can be an animal, it can be something spiritual like an angel or a demon. Um, just so, some sort of being that represents the voices. These beings can be helpful, these beings can be hurtful, and people can develop relationships with their voices through these. In this case, the voice would be distinct. So I don't have experience with this personally. Um, this is probably actually a more stereotypical symptom of schizophrenia, despite the fact that it's not something that is as commonly experienced. I don't have an exact statistic on how commonly it is experienced because I've only seen it mentioned in the literature once or twice, but I have met several people who experience it. Um, but it is, it's, it's a very interesting com crossover of the auditory and visual hallucination, I think, because they're constantly co-occurring. And I do think it's interesting that people can interact with these beings, sometimes um, t touching them and stuff. But as I said, this isn't something I've experienced myself, so I can't give much comment on it. But this is not um, something the media made up. This is something that does happen. Five people, as I alluded to in the previous post, people can develop um, emotional and um attachment to their voices. Um, obviously, if someone has a figural being that's talking to them that helps them, they'll develop an emotional attachment, but it doesn't have to be an ex as extreme a situation as that. Even just having background voices in the day-to-day -day that aren't as intense an experience, one can develop emotional attachment to the voices. For me, when I began to experience my voices decreasing in severity, um, for the first time, I began to experience anxiety and depressive symptoms and just sort of, and almost existential symptoms, really, because I was so used to the chatter and clutter in my brain and in my surroundings that when the voices and other auditory hallucinations started dying down, it was distressing for me and I wanted them back. When, the, when they started to come back, when I um, returned from medical leave to, to university to finish my degree, I was actually relieved because I was... I was very upset at um, the remission I had gone into because it was pretty much intolerable. It was, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So yes, we can get used to living like this, especially for someone like me who's had it since early childhood. And we can develop, if the voices are friendly, the voices are helpful, people can develop an emotional attachment to them, especially if they do experience them in an intense way. And this is where I think it's especially important to recognize that autonomy is important in schizophrenia treatment and that just because schizophrenia is abnormal and we are living an unusual life, that doesn't make us un undeserving of deciding how we live our lives. Uh, hearing voices does not make a person inherently dangerous and we should be able to choose to live with our brains as our brains whether other people like that or not, I think. Anyway, hearing voices is a very complicated and nuanced experience. It varies greatly from person to person. There is no one experience of hearing voices. And the way the media portrays it, well, there are elements that are based in reality, such as their figural hallucinations do exist. And command voices do exist, it's not the same as it is in the media. For example, figure hallucinations are less common than often portrayed in the media, and command voices are not uh, like a command from God. They are something that is commonly resisted by schizophrenic people. And hallucinations are 
by and large, more mundane than the media often portrays. And they are, especially once you've had them over time, less scary than the media portrays. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative. And um, once again, sorry for my birds shattering in the background. Please check me out on Instagram at Psychosis Sensitivity. And please, um, if you enjoy my work, please consider tipping me on my Ko-fi or joining my Patreon. And I will see you all later. Bye.